Happy New Year! It may not feel like that there is much different today, being the first day of 2021, than last year. Honestly, it's hard to forget how difficult and challenging last year was because we're still in it now. It's easy to be fixated on the negative things that have happened that are still part of our current reality. But I thought it would be a good uh, idea for us to start this new year and this service with the truth of God's Word and what it says about us. That in Christ, we are not our past, we are not our mistakes, we are not our failures, and we are definitely not the year 2020. Instead, we are forgiven, we are accepted, and we are made new in Jesus Christ. And that we have a confident hope in 2021 because God is still in control. You know, it's our choice how we want 2021 to begin. And I'd like it to start with worship to God for who He is and what He's done for us. So I'm inviting you to join me for this short time to set apart your morning, your day, uh, to bless the Lord to be with Him, to seek Him, to honor Him, and to worship Him. And since our church has been online, uh, everything seems a bit casual. So I want to encourage you to allow this time to be a devotional time for you and your family. However you treat this time, the goal is that our hearts are focused on the Lord right now as we experience this time together. So let's sing this traditional New Year's hymn together, giving glory to God. It's called, All Glory Be to Christ. Should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive, unless the Lord does raise the house in vain, its builders strive.
baby to cry I've heard it. You've heard it. It's time for a new beginning. Time to start a fresh page or paint a new picture with our life. Sounds great in theory, but it can seem impossible. Life is messy. The lines have gotten blurred. Maybe we just don't know where to start. We look at the canvas of our lives and see mistake after mistake after mistake. It's overwhelming. When I look at my life with these messy lines and scribbles, it makes me think, is this as good as it gets? There's no eraser that can make this life make sense. But what if? What if there was someone that could make sense of our mess? They could take all our scribbles, all our mistakes, all our missed opportunities, and make them into a masterpiece. And then I remember, there is Jesus. He gives us a new life. Every day is new. Every day is a blank canvas full of possibility and promise. He takes our canvases, our lives, that have been filled up with shortcomings, secrets, tragedies, and embarrassments, and he helps them make sense. When I look at the canvas of my life and I see nothing but disorder and chaos, I have to remember this. God is not a God of disorder. He's a God of peace. And you know what? He wants to take my hand and bring peace to the canvas of my life. So as we seek to make our mark, let us give God all our scribbles, all our mistakes, all our hurts, and trust that he will turn our messy lives into a masterpiece, his masterpiece. I would love it if there was some magical eraser that could wipe out this past year. I mean, wouldn't you? But then we would have lost some of the good things that, that we experienced. We would have missed some of the great discoveries. We would have missed some great opportunities. We would have missed some of our greatest blessings. Uh, someone once said that God is able to take our mess and turn it into a message. It's a message of redemption. It's a message of hope. It's a message of victory. I'm always moved when I hear stories or see visually how God is able to turn our scribbles into a masterpiece, just like we just saw. The great thing about a new year is that it feels like we give ourselves permission to start fresh and start new. Our circumstances really haven't changed from December 31st to January 1st, but somehow we allow ourselves to say and to feel, let's start over, let's start fresh. Now that we've officially crossed a threshold from 2020 to 2021, it signifies that change will be upon us. A threshold symbolizes a new beginning. After the wedding, for example, a new husband will take his wife in his arms at the front door of their honeymoon suite, hopefully not drop her. Then he will carry her across the threshold to signify the new life that they will have together. This is symbolic. And similarly, an owner of a brand new store in town will mark the first day of a business by cutting a ribbon across the threshold or the entrance of the store. As Christians, we be in a new year and we also stand at a threshold. And before us are new possibilities and challenges, but also there's obstacles or disappointments that may frighten us. Today I want to look at the story of Moses and how God used Moses to lead his people out of the miserable past as slaves in Egypt to this new threshold of the promised land. They were in the southern Israel and God showed them the land that they had promised to Abraham, their forefathers, many years earlier. And they were standing at a threshold in their lives and in their history. God had already told Moses to send out a team to determine what the Israelites needed to do in order to take the land. And everything was set for them to cross the threshold to enter into what God had already given to them. But there was some hesitation in their plan. Twelve men had been sent out, and ten of them came back with a report that frightened everyone who heard it. 
Only two young men believed that God would give them the land. And having heard both reports, the Israelite elders had to make a decision about whether to cross the threshold into their future. On the threshold of a new year, God gives us, as well as our whole congregation, a, a similar opportunity. What decision will you make as you stand on the threshold of your future? Numbers 13.25 says this, After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit that they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent to us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here's the kind of fruit it produces. But the people living there are powerful, and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. The Malachites live in the Negev, and the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge. They even saw giants there. The descendants of Anak next to them, we felt like grasshoppers, and that's what they thought too. The first thing we see from the story is that we can be frightened by the future. The team's majority report must have scared the leaders of Israel nearly to death. I mean, in their fear, they began to uh, let their imaginations get the best of them. Uh, they began to think that God had brought them to this new land only to brutalize them and their families. They even began to rethink their decision to leave Egypt. I mean, in their fear, they came to the conclusion that maybe returning to Egypt would be a better idea. They even talked about appointing someone who would lead them back to safety in Egypt. I mean, think about it. How outrageous is that? They, they felt the same thing when they encountered a dead end at the Red Sea, but God got them through the Red Sea. So why would they be frightened? Why would they be frightened every time they hit a dead end? Wait a second. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? It sounds like us. Every time we hit a dead end, it's easy to get scared, isn't it? Even though God has been faithful our entire lives, we still get frightened. Numbers 11 gives us the impression that they considered a retreat to Egypt earlier in their journey, but apparently they had grown tired of the manna that God had given them to eat as they traveled through the desert. They wanted to return to Egypt so they could enjoy all of the culinary delicacies there. But one problem they had obviously not thought about in their minds, that Egypt in their nostalgic imaginations, you know what, it didn't exist anymore, if it ever existed at all. When we face our future with fear, sometimes we long for the glory years of the past. The memories of nostalgia can be just intoxicating. We can't fathom that our future would be better than the greatness of the past. And when we hold on to the past, we face an obvious problem, that the better days we are longing for, it doesn't exist anymore, and they will never exist again. The second thing we see from the story is that, <clears throat> though we can be frightened by the future, we can embrace the future. There are two young men, Joshua and Caleb, and they gave a, a, a minority report. And they pleaded to the leaders to move ahead to the land of their dreams instead of retreating to the land of their memories. And in their plea, Joshua and Caleb pointed out some facts that could not be ignored. First, the land would give them the opportunity to flourish as God's people. I mean, even though they would have to face certain challenges as they stepped across the threshold into their future, the risk would actually be smaller than their reward. The second thing is God would go with them as they took the land. Numbers 14, 9 says, don't be afraid of them. The Lord is with you. And they couldn't fail because God had already given them the land. And moving ahead would actually be an act of obedience to God. You know, some of us may be in that kind of situation right now. We might be afraid. We might be worried, concerned. And you might even have assurance that God is with you. 
But now the next step is to move forward as an act of obedience to God. This new year coming up will bring some challenges, but it also brings some promises to be rewarding. I think our best choice is to embrace the future in the faithful obedience to God. So go ahead, step across that threshold as you hold his hand, because God has promised to go with you. In the darkest moments, he's with you, faithful, present, powerful. For those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength this year. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. For the mercies of God are new every morning. We pray for this new opportunities. We pray for new beginnings. We walk by faith and not by sight. Can a brother get an amen? So during this unpredictable year where the wait may be long, the future might be unclear, in the midst of the unknown, we still hold on to Jesus, who is our security, our lifeline, and our everlasting hope. In the chaos, our God is constant. In the chaos, our God is constant. He is never changing. His love still reaches us. Presidents and leaders, they may change over time, but God is always sovereign over all. We may doubt in the darkness, but his victory is certain, and he will prevail. For Christ has overcome and triumphed over the worst possibilities, death. And in Jesus, we will always be his beloved. At the beginning of my message, I said a great thing about January 1st, is that we give ourselves permission to say, let's start over. Let's start fresh. The great thing is that every day in Christ is a new day to be able to say, let's start over. Let's start fresh. Not just once a year on January 1st, but 365 times a year where we can say, let's start over. Let's start fresh. As you know, you'll fail on your New Year's resolutions, but that's okay. Each day you can say, let's start over, let's start fresh. Someday it will click and you will experience shalom, human flourishing. But until then, don't be discouraged. Don't lose heart. We're in this together. We're going to do 2021 together, both online and in person. Amen. I'd like for you now to spend some time to be still and not think about any New Year's resolution, but instead to go before God and spend some time honoring and praising God, thanking God for 2020. And then after you do that, go ahead and present before God your desire, hopes, wishes for this new year. If you are worshiping with your family and would like more time uh, for your family to pray together and need to pause the video at this moment, please go ahead and do so. So let's go before God right now, and the service will continue after the countdown is over.
For this coming new year, we're going to explore what habits we need to develop to have a dynamic relationship with God. I want to invite you and encourage you to fast and pray with us for 21 days to experience God at a whole new level. Allow yourself to be fully dependent on the grace of God through fasting. We expect 2021 to be quite an adventure. Uh, we can't predict what will happen during such an uncertain time, but, but we pray that this will be a year where God will make all things new. God bless you and Happy New Year.